call it to order. We're being auto visually recorded. So I'll be going to the second line, right? No, actually, you guys no, no, you don't need to vote to order. Yeah, but yeah. you guys just call to order. And then you start with uh, public comment? Yes, yes. public comment. And um, this is uh, Joseph Moore. Joseph. Karen Vance, is a health teacher? Yeah, yeah, the high school. Yeah, the high school. So I have a meeting to speak with her and a couple of other staff members next week. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe they will speak to you all about me. There's something going on right now um, about uh, some kind of uh, substance abuse thing that the school is doing with the community, some kind of project. Yeah. You, know, I'm, you know, I'm just now learning about this, you all, so I don't have. Um, much facts, you know, I'm sure you all know a little bit more than me about it, but I'm a motivational speaker, and I was one of the first in the state of Massachusetts to receive 20 years minimum mandatory for a home invasion that I committed back in 1998 in Springfield. I grew up in Amherst, and I grew up in Brockton and Rockland, that's on the south shore of our state. Um, the only drugs I've ever used or alcohol and marijuana. And those two drugs destroyed my life and um, effectively helped me to create uh, countless, um, countless victims throughout the Commonwealth, you all. Um, I have six children and I abandoned my children when I uh, went to prison back in 1999. And part of my story is, you know, my past dysfunction, but a lot of it, uh, well, part of my presentation is about my past dysfunction, but a lot of it also is about just where our community is right now as a whole, where you all are at, um, you all, you know, the parents of the, our children and, uh, you know, our seniors, you know, it's just as a whole how we get this community back. It's not just here in Northampton, but it's, it's everywhere, you know, so um, this, this problem, this epidemic, this crisis and everything we're dealing with. Is very serious and if it hasn't affected your lives and it hasn't affected anyone's um, life that you know it will possibly affect your children or uh, someone you know's children so we just want to do all we can it takes a little bit of awareness it could take you hearing from somebody such as myself but it's basically um, it's within us all to uh, be inherently good you know, because none of us are really, you know, born bad or, you know, dysfunctional. We kind of, it doesn't matter what's in our DNA, we have decisions and choices. And uh, part of what I speak about is the ripple effect, meaning if I do this today, who does it affect tomorrow? And a lot of times I'm not seeing this person, so that's the last thing I'm thinking about. I'm just thinking about instant gratification, what I want now and how I feel now. Um, but then there are victims created by my choices and my decisions. So does anyone have any questions? You know, because I'm not going to hold up your meeting. I'm actually going to take off. I have some place I'm gonna, you know, I need to be. But um, does anybody have any questions for me? Are you going to be presenting in any, in any other formal space? I mean, because it's actually something we could book you here if you want to do your full part. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind, um, you know, the, the masses ideally would be better so that everyone can receive the message at once because, um, you know, everybody here, I would love to, you know, to speak to everybody here about, um, you know, you know, give the presentation here. But if the students at the high school would also benefit or if somebody would feel as though they would benefit at the same time. The only high school, um, I'll sh share this, the only high school so far that I've spoken at was Summers High School in Connecticut. A little over 600 students. I was, uh, I'm affiliated with AA, so when I was just, I was, I've only been out of prison about a year. Uh, one of the Alcoholics Anonymous commitments was for us to go to the high school. So I went to the high school, spoke real briefly to a little health class, and the health teacher was so impressed by me that she said, you know, how much do you charge? And I, you know, I was just getting out of prison, so I didn't charge anything. 
So she booked me, you know, you know, she, uh, they paid me, um, they paid me for it. After I spoke, spoke about an hour and a half, gave my presentation, my wife was in the audience. After I spoke, I said, does anyone have any questions? Nobody raised their hand. I said, you know, we're all family here, you all, you know, speak up. Anybody have any questions? Similar to how you all just look at me when I say, anybody have any questions? You all are thinking things, but, you know, you're trying to take it all in, you know, and, and things, um, things are going on. So anyways, a student raises his hand and he says, how'd you meet your wife? So I told him, you know, I met her while I was in prison and blah, blah, blah. After everything was all done, the bell sounded. I spoke like an hour and a half. You know, some, some kids, they were probably all set with me speaking, you know, ready for me to be quiet. Bell sound is probably lunchtime, you know, people are scattering. A group of kids, you know, none of them connected, just one by one came up to me. Some of them, eyes teared up. Um, my wife's looking at, you know, them, you know, she's kind of in awe at the whole thing and how the kids are coming up. They didn't want to speak up and ask questions in front of everybody but they still had it within them to come up to me afterwards and thank me and explain to me what I did to them. And they, they look like you all, you know, young girls, young boys telling me about how they had just got out of rehab, you know, not, not all of them, but just, you know, a couple of them just sharing, you know? Um, and that's, that's what, that's what we're going through. You all, um, we just, we need to get this thing together and I'm willing to help. Um, and that's about it. I work right down the street at Ralph's Blacksmith Shop. I work like 50 hours a week. And getting into the schools, getting into, just to see the mayor. I went through the mayor's chief of staff. The mayor grew up with one of my coworkers. He said, yeah, he's a good guy. You know, go, go by and see him. You know, he's a good guy. Went through his chief of staff. I didn't get a call back. Went up, talked to the secretary. Finally, the chief of staff emailed me and she gave me some of the contacts, you know, um, Karen and some of these other people and so I emailed them and that's how I found out about you know what you all had going on here but whether I'm trying to speak to a superintendent or a principal in your school or any school it's hard you all there's certain because of what has happened maybe uh, nowadays in our environment and society maybe that's one of the reasons for so much you know precautionary measures so many uh, the buffer system or the red tape I call it but I'm not in the schools you all and your parents don't know that I'm trying to get into the schools. Your parents don't know anything about me. Uh, and it's tough because the parents are the ones dealing with the choices and the decisions you all make. Um, and they, come on, if, if they were to tell you all, you know, you don't like it, go ahead, get out. How many of you all are really gonna do all right by yourselves? Of course, you get, you know, fed up with mom, dad, whoever you live with, but you know, are you paying your own bills? Are you all set to pay first, last month's security on an apartment and, you know, health care for yourself and all this other stuff? They, they love you all. My parents love me and they didn't want me to, um, you know, be in prison for as long as I was and they didn't want me to hurt our community, but that's what I did. So if the parents knew that I was willing to give back and I was willing to explain to you all what happened with me and just, you know, just, you know, talk to you all and listen to you all, then they would absolutely um, co-sign for me to be in, um, you know, be in these places and, and speak to you all. So that's what I'm challenged with and I have to put food on the table so I'm at work all day. By the time I get out of work, you all are leaving school. Staff is just as happy to get out of there when you all get out of there, you know, and uh, it's just, it's difficult for me, you all. So. I'm trying, I'm traveling around the state, going to different little groups and trying to kind of backdoor my way into um, some things and that's how I'm meeting people. But you know, eventually you all will be able to help me and that's why I came here to speak to you all. Because where, what you all are doing here, I'm sure there's other cities and towns that are doing the same thing. So eventually, that's maybe how I can network because you all are the future, so you all will eventually help because I know you all want what's best. You have my contact information, and yes, I do. And I'm the I'm the council president, uh -huh. so uh, and actually sort of the deputy mayor. Believe it or not, I know it doesn't look right, but um, <laughs> but you and I should talk. I would like right. to. I think we can work out something that would give you an opportunity to have an audience to talk to. All right. And a receptive audience is going to you'll make some you you know I think you can have, I think you have an important message to share. Mm -hmm. 
you know, my contact information is on there. And like I said, I have an appointment with Karen and a couple of other staff members on Tuesday, so hopefully something good will come from that. I'm going to the uh, to the uh, opiate yeah, task force meeting in Greenfield Community College uh, tomorrow. And if given a chance to speak, I will explain to the public or whoever's in attendance some things that they've never heard before. You know, I'm, you know, it probably shocked them, but it's it's things that your parents should know. Maybe. You all really don't need to know it at this point in time, but it's things that the taxpayers, the people that uh, footed the bill for all my uh, years of incarceration and took care of my responsibilities, my children, while I was incarcerated, it's things that they need to know that the millions of dollars assigned to all these programs in our state, that money, these college graduates that are that have these positions to be responsible for change in our community, these people aren't quick to come out with this information and I don't know why. And it's things I'm gonna talk about. Um, just like I may share things at the high school with you all that your parents don't necessarily share. And it may not be for the right or wrong reason. Maybe you all aren't asking, maybe they feel uncomfortable. You all know how it is, but it's things you all find out on your own. And maybe that's the right way, maybe that's the wrong way. But. I try to share as much as I can with my children because I'd rather them get it from me first than from one of you all because maybe you all don't have their best interests at heart. Maybe you want them to go smoke a joint and I don't want them to. You know, maybe another kid wants my child to, uh, you know, go and do something else, you know, have sex or commit a crime, something. You, you all know what I'm saying. So that's how I'm raising my children. Um, you know, some of my kids are getting F's, some of my kids are doing great. My daughter is 19, she goes to college, she's a virgin, you know, I'm happy about that. You know, my 15 year olds, you know, it's a little different. You know? But you all know what it's like, you all are, uh, are young. What's your question, Big Black? Have you uh, talked to the Northampton Prevention Coalition at all? No, I haven't. I think um, that's the group that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, they, they, the they, Northampton they, Prevention they, Coalition was is uh, a, 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 used to be called um, Spiffy, something like that. But it, it, it's um, <laughs> but it is it's, it's about doing intervention stuff similar to what you're describing, mm -hmm. um, and that's Karen Vance Jarvis Jarvis Vance, who when you're talking with yeah. is associated with that. She can she can connect. She named them. two other names, I believe, a gentleman and a woman who will Call be meeting you. with us. Excuse me? Paul McNeil? The Maybe. Um, they're in my email. There's two other names that will be there. And then, of course, I'm sure you all can go and talk to her, mm -hmm. you know, after Tuesday and say, you know, what happened with this guy? You know, what's, what's, what was it like? And, you know, what are our chances of, you know, us hearing more from him? Um, say, any other questions you all, you all can ask me anything. I'm not, like I said, I know you all have a meeting, but uh, I don't have any secrets you all. And you all will hear that, you know, eventually, I'm sure. Everybody all set? Thank you for Thank your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please. All right. That's my cell phone on that card. It's okay. It's going to be calling you back. All right. Thanks. Take care. Is he trying to speak at I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. So you guys have before you the language for the plastic bag ordinance. You also have a council inspector here. Um, and you guys have two things that you're going to talk about. One was voting to recommend or not recommend, or to amend. And then also you wanted to talk to the council inspector about the issue of sponsorship and what that meant. So he's here to, to address those issues if you have any more questions about the ordinance. Um, he broke it down for you. Well, most of you guys are here. Some of you weren't. Essentially, um, you correct me when I'm wrong. The essence You're is wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, point, of, uh, point of sale plastic bags, plastic bags you get at grocery stores and various other places. And it's based on the thickness of the bag, is the criteria. Of those thin, single use plastic bags, they're just, the, this wouldn't affect ban their usage in the um, city of Northampton. There will be a transition period, a uh, grace period where uh, businesses um, can give them enough time to compensate and there's also uh, a, a possibility of appeal, right? Yep. Uh, during the course of that. Um, and 
that's the that's the thrust of this is to prevent the plastic bags that you see hanging in trees that are in waterways and the, and the like and all the associates and to try and diminish the um, ill effects from their manufacture to the ill effects of their post use that uh, have long term impacts. Um, did you talk to the senior center? Did you talk to the council of aging? I have not talked to them. Um, they've spoken with the Chamber of Commerce and represented the Chamber of Commerce and, and actually met with surprising uh, enthusiasm. Um, so what you're charged with is reviewing this ordinance, deciding whether you would recommend the city, when it comes to the council, whether we vote in favor or against. So you actually will influence our decision. If you have any comments on it, you can forward those to the council as well. So last so, time we did, we voted in support of I guess it was an amendment or recognition, I'm not entirely sure, of making it multilingual um, for whatever meets the needs of the places that will be affected. Um, other than that, the other things that were brought up last time um, was having some sort of outreach to people who have to uh, like walk with their food from that either live near stop and shop or not so near and they carry their things in those plastic bags. Um, and then we also talked about like there being some outreach and trying to get people other kinds of bags or something. That was that was all that was brought up last time. Language also, right? Language, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was part of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Were there any other things that anyone remember? I think that's what we just talked about. Voted on the amendment and approved the new amendment. Yes. So. I don't know. Is, was, does anyone remember if that was an amendment? Was, is, is that an amendment or is that a recommendation? You were going to send it on as a recommendation. <coughs> okay. In fact, I did pass it on to Council Spectrum. You can speak to that. Yeah. In ter in, which was the one in terms of the bilingual piece? The, the yeah. multilingual uh, yeah, translation. I, I have a question for you on that then. Would that be something that that's, would actually be in the language of the ordinance? Or is that when we actually go out and do the, the, the process and the education piece? That that's a second stage. So you pass an ordinance, and then it's how do you put it in effect? So I well, that was that was the discussion, and I think more the latter than the former. Yeah. I think it didn't necessarily have to be embedded language, but it certainly could be um, part it, of the education process. It could be part of the directive that we give. The mayor will oversee this. It could be part of the directive we give to whoever. The mayor has the option of either allowing the uh, board of health or the Board of Public Works to be the kind of the organization within the city that's going to both do the implementation and look at people who are not complying with it. And so that could be a piece that we then ask the mayor to make sure that the bilingual piece is done and including the thing of how about for people who might have any kind of difficulties because they're no longer the plastic bags and there will only be the um, paper bags or they bring their own bags. <laughs> it's the, the reason you might not want to embed it in this language is, is a law that stands on the books. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is something that's actually just initiating, and once it's initiated, once it's all the people have been contacted, so you're talking about education, which is a process with everything. When you do a four-way stop, you have to educate people, but you don't embed the language about education. You don't just throw up a four-way stop and say, best of luck to you. You actually have to put up signage, you put a police officer there, they slowly train people, tell them not to swear so much when they try to figure out a four-way stop. But it's not that's not embedded in the law. But it, so you're talking about an aspect of implementation which would be, uh, your recommendation is an excellent recommendation and uh, should be included when it's forwarded, but the fact is it shouldn't necessarily be an amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's not going to be an amendment. Does anyone have any questions about it? I feel that. Well, what you guys should first do is first put it on the floor so you can debate it. And so that would take, um, say, someone would say, I uh, move that we um, recommend. And somebody would say, 
second, and then you guys can debate it, and then you vote whether you recommend or not. Okay. So. Uh, motion to recommend the plastic bag. Second. Second. And now you can debate it and discuss it. Does anyone have any questions about it? <laughs> it might affect or the cost, or I like the different fines. So I think it goes a hundred dollars the first time, and then or fifty, and then a hundred. And then hundred for all any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can, can I have one little piece? I think from the last time somebody asked why a great question on <coughs> why the thickness of the bag that we chose, and I didn't have. We were just following the California law, mm -hmm. which is now going to apply to 40 million people. So we thought, well, they must have done their research, but we didn't really look at what the research was. And it came up because right now at Stop and Shop, if you go to the pharmacy, they're actually selling for 10 cents thicker plastic bags than the 1.5 milliliter. And so, whoa, are they trying to get around the ordinance even before it's in there, you know, by selling the bags? The reason California chose that is this, all the research shows is that when the bag gets thicker, people actually end up reusing it. It doesn't become the single-use plastic bag. And for those of you who weren't here, of which there are 10 million at least a year used in Northampton alone. So they're not then just tossed out and you know, thrown away, that those bags have become thicker. That was the reason California chose that size after much research on it. So. My general opinion on it is it's always better than nothing to at least move towards that way and also sort of, if we can, if we can eliminate more, that's better than not doing anything, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm. It seems like a solid organ. Yeah. yeah, it's not easier than the styrofoam container. Fewer issues, you know, bags versus, you know, containers. There are more alternatives. Yeah, I'm just, I really like this. Um, I just have one question. Um, yeah. Like, do you know who in Northampton, like, if anyone, this would negatively affect? Well, it's going to affect all the folks who own businesses, whether that's negatively or not. Stop and Shop, I think I told you this last time, when Stop and Shop about five years ago started looking at how can we train people to bring their own bags, they went, they did this whole thing where they started paying people like a nickel if you brought your own bag, and then they did away with that, and then they found out that over 40% of people in Northampton, we actually have the best record in the state, over 40% of people in Northampton started bringing their own shopping bags. So short term, it could have a small, it's not a huge effect on businesses that have to change over to either use a <coughs> plastic bag or most likely they'll use a paper bag. That will cost them slightly more per bag. But in the long run, if you look at what's happening, more people are going to start to just use cloth. I mean, I don't know, 10 years ago, nobody was using cloth bags, maybe even seven years ago. And now, quite a few people are. When something like this goes into effect and people start getting used to it, you're going to start seeing a sizable number. So down the road, I don't even know if it's going to have a negative financial impact. And probably over time, it will be neutral or even something positive. Some uh, manager at Stop and Shop told me when I spoke to him, he said, we're actually looking at saving a good deal of money in the long run when everybody ends up bringing their own bags. You, um, somebody mentioned senior citizens were talking about a negative impact uh, by not having the plastic bags. Um, you know, I will definitely talk to the, the folks at the, at the senior center about why that is and why having uh, either thick or plastic bags, and you know, the folks I know who are seniors, actually I'm one of them now, that they tend to be the highest group using cloth bags, because many of them grew up at a time where there wasn't all of this packaging. They grew up at a time when you went to the store and there weren't all these different things you could put, everything wasn't already wrapped, you know, they had to have a way to come home. So that's been my experience, but I'll certainly talk to them. The other folks, and that's why I brought the dog, are my friends who are dog walkers, who all are complaining, well, what are we going to use as our, because that's where single-use plastic bags are used a lot. But the deal is you can still buy the packages of the bags with hundreds, and the city actually, at many of the places where you can walk dogs, you'll see there are little containers with single-use bags for definitely a single use. So, I, I don't know, we're, wait, we're still waiting. 
uh, Councillor Adams wanted to come to the, tonight. He said, he said, said he's still waiting for there to be like some backlash against this. So we're going to have a public meeting um, on Tuesday, five o'clock Tuesday, April seventh. If any of you want to come, a public forum. We're trying to really reach out, and we're both waiting for there to be this backlash, which often has happened on even some of the most uncontroversial things, as, as Council President will tell you. And on this. We've had so little pushback that we're still kind of waiting. So that's a great question, and we'll see what shows up in the public forum. I have a question. Yeah. Um, okay, because I'm confused now. Is this like trying to regulate or ban the sale of plastic bags or like the distribution? No, it's not the sale of plastic okay. bags. So if you want to buy a box of single use plastic bags or thin <laughs> plastic bags, you can do that. It's at the point of sale. So okay. when you get to the cash so register, they'll bag it in a paper bag. Yeah, they're putting it in. You know, I went to Stop and Shop yesterday. I forgot my cloth bags, and they just started packaging it. They put it in plastic. I must have out of like eight, ten bags, you know, and left there with eight or ten bags. And what did I do with them? Well, I already have a whole box of them, so I just toss them. So it's, it's only a point of sale. You still can buy them. And actually, the question came up last time. If you're at the um, like vegetable department, you're buying fruit, those bags are still usable. Those are still the single-use plastic bags. And those are not being banned. It's only when you get to the cash register what they are putting the products that you have just bought into. And meat is exempted too, right? Like yep. Anything inside mm -hmm. the store that you're buying is exempted. Um, but also with educating, especially with seniors, like saying, oh, this is what we're doing, would it like be to their benefit and maybe to like saying, oh, this isn't a bad thing so they don't complain if like somehow like Stop and Shop sponsors bags, like reusable bags to give to them at meetings at senior centers? That's or, a great idea. Um, because, like, I guess that, like, also helps. I mean, I guess maybe, like, having a sponsorship is kind of... That's not the best maybe, but, like, having them donate bags. It's a great idea. It's something that we talked about last time, that it's uh, cereals. He actually had a bag, cloth bag tree. Uh, take a bag, bring a bag. And he had a couple hundred donated to start. All kinds of people donated. The problem was... People took the bag, didn't bring the bag, but they were incredibly popular. Everybody wanted a bag. We put all kinds of stuff, carry all kinds of stuff in it. So, um, but we'll talk to you know Stop and Shop, Big Y, other places, and you know I think it's to their benefit. You'll notice at Stop and Shop they really are pushing their bags quite a bit, and I think what you're going to see is, and they charge you for it. I think what you'll see is for a short period of time they'll either drop that price dramatically, which is what's happening in California stores. Because then you have to do, they have to pay for their own paper bags. Or you may even see them, for a short period, give away bags for free, the cloth bags. Um, are you familiar with the, um, uh, the bag share project? Uh, OK. It um, is? Yeah, it's actually like um, throughout Mr. Miles. Yeah, it's like throughout Mr. Massachusetts. There's like people have been making bags out of like reusable, like old materials or like something not not generated from materials. Uh -huh. And they've just kind of been giving these bags out to different businesses. And like, right, I'd love to if you um, can. Um, yeah, there's been like people made like I think like thousands or something. And, like, I'd love to hear things. more about it. If you could get me through through um, Bill. Chris Cavallari was doing it at Syria. Yeah, they're doing it right now. Oh, oh, Chris, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Okay. They're doing like 11 locations and everything. Yeah, now there's a. No. And yeah. I forgot who else is in the group, but if you go to Cereals and ask Gary, I'll talk to Gary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do we want to have any other questions or anything, or do we want to try and move it to a vote? Or? Vote. Vote? The vote of what? To, <laughs> to, 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 rec to recommend. Then sponsoring. The so what's the difference between recommending and sponsoring? The recommendation is, is, is just as it sounds like. You are recommending to the council, if you approve it, you're recommending to the council that they vote in favor of this. It's not a guarantee they will, but it's a, it's a reinforcement recommendation along with your suggestions. Sponsoring means that you're actually signing on and saying, we feel so strongly about this, 
that we want to be associated with this and we want um, that it's an extra level of reinforcement of your support if you were and you were invited by the original sponsor Spectre and Adams to consider that if you wanted to because you guys were originally the sponsors of the styrofoam band so the, the invitation is extended you, there's no obligation to either you, you can action the courses both say no we don't approve we forward without a recommendation and Clearly, if that's the case, you probably wouldn't want to sponsor it. <laughs> it would be very confusing. But that's essentially the difference. I want to move for a vote. Move for a Second. Okay, so all in favor, say aye, I guess, or something. Yeah, yeah. Recommend. Recommend. Yeah, yeah, for recommending it. Any uh, no? Oh, oh for this is there, yeah. Oh, I thought you were recommending it sponsor. No. Or, oh, it's not recommending it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any, any opposed? Any abstentions? This is it. Yes. Okay. So now we have to open it up again for debating whether or not we sponsor it, right? Mm -hmm. So you so make that a motion. So many yes. motions. Yes. Discuss sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Second. So my, my personal opinion, and as you guys will all see from the uh, enormous bench walk packet that you all got, we have a lot of stuff we need to do, and we have three months, less than three months. We have two and a half months when we won, when are sort of trying to have this by. Um, that's kind of ambitious, even though it sounds like a long time, there's still a lot and a lot of stuff, stuff that needs to be done. And realistically, you really need to have this done in a month and a half because that's when, when people start painting benches. Mm -hmm. So I think um, as much focus as we can give to this is probably in our best interest. Um, so that's, that's, that's at least, I mean, if, I, I, I mean, I, I support it, but oh, I think, I think that's our right. Oh, yeah. Well, I, sh I should say that sponsorship won't require any more work of you. We will not be asking anything on yeah. the yeah. You won't, beyond that, all your name will be on it. Uh, in, actually, oh, no, no, no. If, at the end of this vote, you're obliged to do nothing else as far as this goes. You're welcome to and participate in everything else, including with the sponsorship. But we you, can go hide. You don't, you can focus on the bench walk and, uh, and uh, your name will be. On, on the top of this ordinance, along with Councilor Specter and Adams, will be the Northampton Commission Commission sponsors, and that's the end of your obligation. That's it. Yeah, in that case, then, sure. In that case, yeah. if it's something that we all voted for unanimously, it's probably something that we want to happen, and so having further support is probably a good idea. All right, and that way, if we want to do the option in the future, like after the benchmark is done, right, we could do something to help, or could yeah. take part in it. And not to put too fine a point on it, that it will also show that the Northampton Youth Commission doesn't just do goofy stuff. <laughs> I mean, the very goofy little stuff. I mean, you actually, you will, this will be the second item. This will be the third item. You have the stormwater, the gun control, and this. And fourth, you have the stuff that didn't actually. Good point. Good point. Good point. So there's, there is law and resolutions that you guys have been assigned to, and that's in the last two years. Before that, the, count of the Youth Commission was not associated with any laws or rules or ordinances. And this is what we had hoped that the Youth Commission would be more involved in these things, so. Well, in that case, does anyone have any other questions about what this means or anything? Are we gonna do a bench? Oh. It might mean that there was 16 Right, so is that when, when Claire and I went yesterday, we found 16. Excuse me, you're going to have to vote yep. on this. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, yeah. Um, any other questions or anything on that? All those in favor of co-sponsoring the sorry, not sorry, plastic bag then? Oh, yeah, that looks pretty. Oh, yes. Yeah. Any opposed? No, no, that was for the previous one. Abstentions? We're good. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Wait, who's that um, so, yeah, so this whole big packet of this here is just like everything up to this point that's everything you've done. happened at all and like a to-do list. So um, I'll just give like a brief little overview and stuff and then I think it, I think we should actually all go through it together as a group um, because I think, I think it's important for us to all sort of be on top of it and also Marilyn and I were discussing that it'd be nice to try and get the donor apps out by next Friday, which is uh, ambitious, but we think it's it's probably day after tomorrow. Season. You mean? No, no, no oh, next okay. next week. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, so just like general things. So Claire and I went yesterday. We looked. We tried. We like mapped out all the benches. Um, I think it's the second to last page. You can see where all of them are. The one that's on top of City Hall is not a bench, by the way. Um, so there's 16 there. There are some of those benches that's like uh, over by Thorns, that's sort of like in a circle area, but those are not the same kind of benches that are there. Those ones that are at the bus stop, is, they're also not the same kind. There's the ones um, in Plasky Park, and those aren't the same ones. These are like the metal, metal back, metal bottom, black benches. Um, there's 16 here. So what we're thinking now is that 10 of them would be artists, five would be schools, and if we wanted to, we could have that last one be the youth commission, which I think would definitely be, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, and Mary and I, yeah. You have five schools, many benches here, which five are those? Yeah, we're thinking of combinations, but you're not you have 18 benches, not 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Plus, and it, uh, seven, 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 eight, 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 but that's like seven that. schools. Exactly. So seven schools. And that's nine. Eight benches. Seven schools. What are the schools? Seventeen eight benches. Eight. Ten for artists. There are seventeen benches. Seven. Seventeen. Uh, seventeen. Uh, seventeen. No. no. So there were eighteen. Is there another dot that's not actually benched? Yeah, there's sixteen. Wait. Okay. Well, then there's too many dots here. I promise you, there's only sixteen. Nine. 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 Okay, well oh, then sure. I messed something up. There's only 16. Yeah, really sure. really I promise you there's only 16. Oh, okay. okay, then we should yeah. do the artists and yeah. do one for you. <laughs> so we have 16. So we could do a youth mission or we could like, make one more school. So there are like two or three classes and fifth graders. We, we can be crammed. So my main thought is like if we do, if, if we did seven schools and us, then half of this is just kids, <laughs> and I see it. that's, I don't think necessarily what I feel like our goal is. I feel like, like a fingerprint. Yeah, my thought was like, that, this <laughs> like one. that when there's two different groups in middle school, like two different groups of elementary schools, one can do like handprints and the other one can do like, what the I don't know. Yeah, I believe the process is school yeah, I think that's a good idea. It says, it says 16 crossed out, 15 renovated. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, because they're like weird. Round, like, yeah, 15 sounds like. Oh, okay. Yeah, so can we go home? Also, we Yeah, we can, we can just, yeah, so we can do. Because also, like, high school kids will be eligible for the main competition anyway. Like, yeah. So, how many elementary schools? There's four elementary schools. There are four. So, so, 12 artists. Four could be 11 artists and one. Oh, right, right, sorry. Are we Yeah. I think we should. It's our form of I think it's our, we should because it's our first year doing yeah. project. And is anyone here? Well, maybe we have these really good art. We but like, I think we can just, we'll come up with some like I mean, yeah, yeah, we should, I think we're back to our first year. We should paint, no, we should paint a portrait of Bill. 
<laughs> that would be really would scary. Like? <laughs> that would be really <laughs> scary. Very nice. Let's go with one of those right now. Yeah, okay. line so, yeah, so we'll shoot for 16. All right, so. So, so four by the schools, one by us, ten by our. Okay. Well, I don't think we buy the schools. There aren't any benches by any of the schools. They will still be down there somewhere. No. Oh, no, I painted by the schools. Um, <laughs> all right, so the other thing that is, so um, where we're at right now with the paint is that um, Sam Benecki, we have no idea what I was going to say. there we go. Oh, yeah. that guy. Which oh, so yeah, he contacted the vendor of like who makes the stuff that goes on the paint, yeah. and but he said that he talked to like the city like hardware person or something. I don't even know. I don't know. It was some really odd title. And he said, like, they're pretty confident that if we sand them down, then we'll be fine. And that they can make sure that we don't sand them too much or anything, because that's bad or whatever. Um, but it looks like it's all good to go. We're just finding out what's the right kind of paint. Mayon and I met with Foster for our two weeks ago? Was it last week? I don't even know. I can't tell time anymore. Um, I think last week, we met with them, or some, some, at some point we met with them. Um, at the time we were asking for, I think, $1,500. It's less now since we, there aren't quite as many benches. Um, they may or may not want to do this many. If not, we were thinking we'd split between Foster Farrar and maybe like the Florence, whatever, Sherman Williams and Florence. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, then, um, and if not, I mean, wherever we get it from is going to have to probably order however much it is. They're not probably gonna have that much there. Um, yeah. Um, so I saw you had five quarts of paint in different colors. Oh, yeah. that was the other thing. Do you want to say what that whole thing um, is? Yeah, so we were originally thinking of eight different quarts of paint for each bench of many different colors, but that was getting way too expensive and high on paint and waste. And so the recommendation of Art Northampton Arts Council, Brian Foot was to have the, each artist get five quarts and have it be the primary colors. Well, technically cyan, and magenta, cyan. and yellow, because I've done they like those are the exact yeah, ones. Yeah, which I didn't know, but yeah. What's the like issue with like them just choosing like their own paint? Their own paint? The uh, I think the issue with that is whatever colors they choose, they're more limited of the colors they can mix. Because mm -hmm. like if they're getting pre-mixed colors, they only have three colors. And then if they want more than three colors on their bench, they only have the colors that they can mix from the colors they got, which is a more limited range than they would get. Plus, the it's less work. You can just like go into the store and I'm like, oh yeah. look, I have a little slip of card or whatever. Yeah. It's giving me my paint. Yeah, it's also harder because like if the color is not exact, then the artist has a problem. But then they don't have the colors to like mix what they need and. And plus, the paint can be really hard. Yeah, it's easier for us to get the donations from Foster for Art also if they can like buy it and not have to mix it themselves because that's more time. And also they said that this that. kind of paint just doesn't really mix that. Like for, for them, it, they, what they were saying is it doesn't make any difference for them to mix it versus someone else mixing it. So keep in mind we'll do it on the spot. And also, you did the I saw you did the donor levels with three colors. Oh, yeah. Cyan, yeah. Cyan, yellow, and pink. That's what Brian put. Down. Yeah, Brian, Brian put it started in like our, this is like the way that our council does things, so it's probably like, and it kind of works, so like, mm -hmm. you guys should probably go with that too. Um, so yeah, so, okay, so let's just like start from the beginning. Um, and I think, I don't know, unless it's someone's like opposed to it, I think we should actually like read through the things. We need to make sure that it's all like in English and it sounds good too. If we're trying to have this by next Friday, mm -hmm. so, so just like each of us editing these things. Yeah, but I, I think we should like actually read. Through, um, does anyone like opposed to us doing that? I mean, it'll take a little bit, but I think mm -hmm. I think I think you it's just during the week. Not no, like right like right now. We don't have to do like the agree to sign this thing off because that's just what they gave us. So it's probably just not spelling error, but the like the packet thing. Does someone want to read like the mission statement? Want to start, anyone want to start that off? I think I have to head out with that. Okay. I'll read okay, it. Yeah. As a celebration of art in our community space, the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission is heading a collaborative public art project in partnership with local businesses to sponsor artists to paint the benches of downtown Northampton. Our goal is collaboration between artists, businesses, and the community, and a celebration of the Northampton community. One thing, yes. <laughs> I think we can, like, 
about that last sentence. You, you already say collaboration with businesses and artists, and you already say celebration of art. And we're saving the And you get the, yeah, you get the gist of what's that's last night. Nice. And a um, short mission, mission statement is good. Yes. Also, first sentence, our community space. What, was, what if it was our community's space? Just my, I know we argue about that word and like over and over. It's our kind of hard. Our community <laughs> space. <laughs> I think our community space belongs to the community. You can do it. Community apostrophe space. I like this. Yeah. Community space. Community space. Make up one word and they won't realize. Community space. Community space isn't the same thing as community space. Community space would mean like all of Northampton community community space would mean like wait I don't even know but the space right? belongs <laughs> to the community the space is community, community space, space is 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 the is the thing. wait this makes no sense the community space like community oh. space could mean like my house but the community space is like the parts of the town where where you can, uh, like it to we public all space. are yeah, yeah. change it to public space I see that and and I wouldn't make it possessive. The reason you make it possessive, then it makes it somewhat exclusive. You're the trying art, to say the you're the outsider who's coming to paint our space, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying you're the insider. We're all part of the community. We're all part of the public. So it's our public space and not our public's space. Saying you know, so if you say it's our public space, we're inviting an outsider to come paint our public space. We're asking them to be involved and be part of the public, so let them share it so everyone shares public space. What about as a celebration of art and public space? Yeah, that's many good. words. Okay. Who wants to do the first paragraph then of the project summary? I'll do that. Okay. Uh, bench walk is an opportunity to celebrate art in the downtown area of Northampton. Fifteen of the benches we painted by. Now. <laughs> it's so pretty. Yeah, but are we doing 16 for including us? Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. you're the one who said it sounded better as 15. Oh, we can do 15 too. Uh, I don't 15 care. <laughs> <laughs> 15 of the benches will be painted by 10 What? Oh, 15 of the benches will be painted by 10 local artists, four, 5 by the section 4, four, four by the Northampton School, and 1 by us. Okay. And 1 by elementary school. Uh, the artists will have a two-week-long period during the summer to paint the veggies on site in downtown. At the end of the week, there will be an unveiling ceremony occurring concurrently with Arts Night Out, during which the benches will be presented and people will have an opportunity to walk around in my building. Two things, occurring concurrently and walk around. You can get rid of concurrently, occurring during Arts Night yeah. Out. Um, and walk around, it's too long. Isn't there a you, word that means occurring concurrently? Same time. Same time. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally. It will happen, no, I don't know. I said just during, it's part, it's it's part of Arts Night. We'll yeah. have an out. It's, it's so. As part of Arts Night, I will be featured in Arts Night Out or whatever. Um, you don't have to walk through downtown. Walk through downtown. I The second sentence is technically saying that 10 artists will paint 15 benches and five of yeah. something unnamed will be painted by Northampton Cold? Schools. I think if we take, or if we just take of the out, it'll say 16 benches will be painted by artists oh, and that works. You should actually so change it to artists will paint. That's passive voice. Mm -hmm. The um, 11 artists and Four elementary schools will paint. Yes. Six. That's and youth commission will paint yeah. six sketches. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go? Uh, yeah. All right. Artists and the schools will submit proposals for bench designs. A jury will select the designs to be used for the benches. Uh, the artists will be paid four hundred and fifty dollars for their work and will be supplies, supplied with the necessary paint and materials. The unveiling ceremony will happen the same evening as Arts Night Out. 
which will create an even larger celebration of Northampton art. There will be a brief speech given by Mayor Narkowitz and the chairs of the Mayor's Commission, which will then be followed by a ribbon cutting at the bench in front of City Hall. People will receive maps detailing the location of different benches, the respective artists, and listing the different sponsors for bench walks. They will then have the opportunity to meet the artists and view their works. Following the event, there will be a reception with drinks and appetizers for all donors and artists. And that's not something we necessarily need to do, but it was something that um, Brian put, uh, recommended to have is like, especially since we have some donors that there's only someone still get out of sponsoring us. So it would be like a nice little after thing and it won't cost that much and we can probably get it all donated too. Yeah. Is, is the event gonna be like a set time? Cause that could be kind of hard, especially if artists were gonna stand near their work to have a reception, unless the event is a set time. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, I mean, there's, whenever the people, like, also, we need to ask the mayor, probably, too, since I know he's, like, busy and stuff, so that's probably be a good idea to do that. I mean, I mean, a set end time, not a set start Oh, time. oh, yeah, I think, I think it's, like, two hours or something. I think it was kind of, like, five to seven, and, like, obviously, after seven, you can still be walking around looking at the benches, right. but that it would be kind of no scheduled one knows. for, like, that's when we would be actively out there and do stuff, yeah. Good. Where would the reception like, be? I have no idea. Yeah. The reception would be like, yeah, you could have it in here. Um, but I think we could ask, ask some. Really well, I think just ask a restaurant to just be like, come to their one of their rooms or something or and just do like half that thing. Yeah, or we could get like restaurants to sponsor and have it like behind thorns where they have like the farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah. 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 Ye
you know, work on the section when we know. Which yeah. Has somebody already set up the email? That, yeah, those, the NoHo Benchwalk, because Benchwalk was already a thing, I guess, and HAMP NYC. Uh, there is a Benchwalk at gmail.com. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> But I don't think we should have two emails address, two email addresses for Just stick to one. Yeah, like just have an email too. Because like one yeah, Why can't we just do it just like Google Docs? Like it doesn't really matter. Because it's for strangers. Mm -hmm. No, Google, do no, because there's things where it's like enter, because I know in Camelot we do like entering data through Google Docs, so it's just it's like a I survey was thing, thing, and I've done it. They don't have, they don't have image that. upload on there. That's why oh, I did it. Really? Really. Can we do something through Moodle? I think. Well, everyone does, you know. Oh, I thought you meant yeah. like. No, because the uh, Amazon. Yeah. I well, you could, for a picture, you guys could get, get Dropbox <laughs> for photograph <laughs> uploads because high resolution yeah. photos take up too much. You can get multi multiple files and back. You could give them a link to authorize them to put in the Dropbox with identifying yeah, file sure. names. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a lot easier. They can submit photographs to their site. So you want one address. And then a drop back, a drop box. Okay. Um, a lot of artists have portfolios, like set portfolios, with a dozen or two dozen pieces. It might be a little annoying to set an upper limit on the pieces of artwork. That's like nitpicky. It says seven to ten. But um, uh, yeah, but we don't want to. We don't actually, to Liam's point, is a lot of them would have their own website yeah. with their portfolios on their website. That you can see images, and you might give them that as an option to link to the, or a link to your website, and then you can just go and look at their images on their website. You don't have to load them up. Yeah. You don't have to do any of that lottie da, and that would save them. I mean, they may want to show I you. Mean, my, my, I mean, my main thought is like, if you have everyone do the same thing, that sort of makes it the easiest, and that's the way that the Arts Council does. It. I mean, then because then we have to do. I mean, if they're not doing an extra thing, then we're doing an extra thing. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. So I think it's sort but of is it much more trouble for us to look through like yeah. 15 to 20 pictures? Well, I mean, going make, the website, make people like copy and paste oh, like seven of their favorite pieces into a Word document and send it to us. Well, maybe if it's like it have, they, they have, have like it. pictures that were more correlated to like the work that they do on the best. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when they're the ones who are proposing it, that way it would be just about the same for everyone. Wouldn't that someone like some pictures and some like 25? Like some like, oh, all of the pictures on their website are a sculpture, and then it'd be like... Yeah, this this is what this is what David people and and um, well, then we can just Brian people both saying, and they like the artisty yeah. people, so. So then you just I, I just sort of I just sort of trust what they said because they they've gone through all this before. And they said so. Yeah, that, that's what they were both saying. It's like you don't want to get too many. So you're just gonna kill yourself. Um, someone want to do the artist for design review thing then next? Yeah. Okay. Let me do it. Oh, all right. Yeah, sure. Um. Okay. Um, a review board consisting of five people will assess each artist's submitted works and design proposal. The board will consist of one Northampton Arts Council member, one Youth Commission member, and one local artist. The review board will assess each artist's submissions based on the following criteria. Creativity, concept, um, and visual aesthetic. Okay. Um, the review board will need to vote on the eight best pairs of designs and three alternative pairs of designs. Afterwards, they will notify the artist via email and mail. The artist must confirm their commitment to painting the benches. If one of the artists is no longer available to paint the benches, um, then one of the three alternative artist, artist nominees will have the opportunity to paint the two vacant pictures. Wait, what is the deal with two vacant? No, that should say one. How about paint the <laughs> two, 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 two fill the vacancy? There you go. And what, so the pairs of benches are not on Yeah, that, that, was, that was a thing where like, when we were with Brian Foote and we all thought we had like this amazing idea and then Meryl and I left and we were like, 
be really odd for people to be painting benches, especially if they're not near each other to paint two of them. Yeah. So, All right. and then also it cuts down on how many people can do it. It also cuts down pretty quick if you don't have less for I mean, for painting the benches though, like deciding what artist gets what bench, we're just doing like four names. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's and I'm guessing that one local artist can't be painting a bench, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that person, that's the biggest evil. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that's what the selection of the bench is. So to ensure fairness, each artist will be randomly assigned to a bench located in down in the downtown or Hampton area. No one may choose their own bench, and no changes or swaps are permitted. Where? Uh, yeah. So wait, when we throw the four elementaries into the mix when doing the randomly assigned benches, or will we like have those ones already set so that they're like more evenly spread out, and then have the rest of them be like artists? Sure, you would yeah. want all four of them. Probably have have all all they don't need to know if we have. I mean, the point well, is like, really just random saying it. It's like yeah. Yeah. leave for the artists to be random. Elementary school for nice. kids. I don't, I mean, do we, we could put all the artists, or all the elementary schools, like, right next to each other, or we could, like, space them out space throughout. Them out. Yeah, I think it'd be better to space them out. So, yeah, we're just doing the mention. Please vote. Why can't we just be, like, this is going to have Well, that, I mean, that's random, right. basically, right there, just being, like, yeah, all right. It's more just saying you guys aren't Or, like, we want this one as prime location. All right, so I'll read the next Payment plan. All selected artists will be paid a four hundred fifty dollars stipend for their bench. Artists will be paid two hundred twenty five dollars after the design is approved by the review board, and two hundred twenty five dollars after the project is completed. Awards will be given in the form of a check. The first installment will be sent to the artist pending their confirmation. The second installment will be given to the artist after the unveiling event. If that is possible. We can't do that just because it's going to make it too complicated for the actual one. city clerk first and oh, whoever how it works and stuff. So we might just do one installment at the end. Um, all checks can be picked up from the Mayor's Youth Commission booth next to City Hall. Any artists that are unable to pick up their checks on the day of the event will have their mail pay, have their payment mailed to them within the following week. Bench Walk is being funded by local businesses and organizations. Businesses and organizations will have the opportunity to give donations directly to the Youth Commission or by donating through not PayPal. What is this really weird thing called? Yeah, yeah, that thing. Oh, that's the city embedded for the. Unipay, yeah. Yeah. Unipay? Unipay. Unipay. It's how you can pay your parking tickets and other things online, so there's already. So that you uh, can have an embed button on the website. Yeah, stuff, yeah. And it'll go directly to the foreign savings. Okay. Um, business and organizations will not be able to influence artists' bench concepts. Artists will have the freedom to design bench they are inspired, inspired to paint. However, Freedom to design their bench. However, they are yeah. However, they are inspired. However, they choose. Okay. Um, okay. This next thing is like completely like this is so. This this is like a very interesting concept, but it was like it was it was like an, we were trying to think of ideas of like how to make this more interactive than just having people like sort of walk around. We talked about like I have to see a little bit idea. Okay, so so the idea is is that like if someone goes to every single bench, at each one of those benches from either the artist or like one of us that's there, they get like a something, and if they get one of each one of these somethings and they come back, then they get like. A T-shirt that's donated by something that says like Ben's Walk 2015 or something on it, and it's a way that makes sure that people are going to all of them, and it's a little more interactive, and you got a memorabilia thing, and also make the T-shirts. Yeah. Want to, want to be a buzzkill that might be really hard to gauge, like how many people are going to come, and then how many of those people are going to do this, and then like how many T-shirts yeah. to get. Well, and then, like how many, which size. Yeah, well then we can make it a, I mean, we can make it first, like, there's a certain amount of whatever at each bench, and if you don't get to that bench in time, it means you're not good at bench walk and you don't get the prize. Right? Maybe, like, there's, like, 115 points or something at each bench. Yeah, well, instead of points, instead of, like, points floating everywhere, we could have, It doesn't like, matter what it is, but, yeah. We could, on, like, the back of the map or something, have, like, um, 
like a, some of the, a passport, yeah. and then have and then oh, just give right. each of yeah, the people like it's a different stamp, and then just stamp it. That's a good call. Um, and then yeah, we just have to they keep just track take the money on like little coins and then drop it. And it, if you want a premium sort of a T-shirt, do a hat. You can get adjustable hats. Oh, Cost true. roughly the same. They fit everybody. And everyone looks really dope walking around with that. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Y